A reading of the minutes of last week's meeting in regard to the upcoming company picnic. Cindy proposed we get a poet. Alan said that he knows someone who went to school with someone who's currently dating a poet. Sarah raised a very serious concern, stating that a slam poet might scare the children. Proposed, find a harmless poet. Action, put out a citywide call for poets. Note, take special care to filter individuals through the interview process in order to control for subject matter, appearance, religious beliefs, and political affiliations. Proposed, no socialists or vegetarians. Proposed, no feminists or Mexicans. Proposed, no atheists or mystics. Subnote, a meat and potato eating fundamentalist albino would be great. Action, recall the city wide call for poets. Action. Matter to be handled internally within the company. Alan says that he suddenly remembers, being Chep Brown noser, that he used to write poems back in middle school. Everywhere there is a call for poets. Poets needed to fill in empty spaces between the DJ and the bands. Poets needed as an opening act. Poets needed to close out the evening. Their voices shall mingle with stale cigarette smoke amidst the chatter of post-game highlights. Proposed, poets should not stir the dust. Action, do not feed the poets. If they eat, they'll be happy. And if we help them achieve a state of happiness, we'll be free up what could have otherwise been a brilliant career. Result, we perpetuate the illusion that only dead poets keep poetry alive. Baby, the dancing dinosaur wasn't available for Timmy's birthday party and the unicorn isn't free until after six. It's okay, hon. Let's go with the poet. I can't seem to find a big enough piñata either. Like I said, babe, let's go with the poet. Proposed, poets should be level-headed and free of slopes and inclinations in order to adhere to our particular reservations. Proposed angles on all thematic issues should be carefully monitored in order to achieve a predetermined measurement equal to or less than the oblique. Proposed poets shall not be versed in mathematics or physics. Should be limited to sweet stanzas and rhyme and specifically asked to avoid explorations of historical time. Wanted time machines, not time travelers who might take you back to a reading of the minutes of a meeting that occurred in my mind the previous hour. There are no harmless poets proposed. Cindy had a great idea. Alan is an a-hole. Cyrus just afraid of hearing people speak the truth. But even so, proposed that we meet at places like Centro Cultural de Aslan to determine and declare the destiny of poetry in our city city of San Antonio. Meeting adjourned. Hi, my name is Selena Gonzalez. I am the author of Loteria Remedios, as well as two picture books for children, Where Wonder Grows is our newest book, and it's illustrated by my good friend, San Antonio West Sider, Adriana M. Garcia. One of the images from this book is the image you see behind me. And our first book is All Around Us, and I wanted to um, show a picture inside its... Uh, Adriana did these pictures of my daughter and my father. My father ran Centro Cultural Aslan many years ago with Ramon Vasquez y Sanchez. And so I grew up um, on Cherry Street, at the Cherry Street location, and when it was at West End. And so it feels like coming home to be here. So I'm very grateful to be here sharing some of my poems with you today. Okay. For this first one called Living Waters, I'd like to invite you to connect with your breath. You can close your eyes if you'd like to. I move with this poem every morning. You can envision the ocean and its reminder to breathe. And I'll start with the question, brother, how deep is the ocean inside you? Sister, how deep is the ocean inside you? swelling in this second, stirring currents of dreams you have yet to fathom. What will you pour into pure reservoir, knowing already it is perfect and enough? And when the storms come, as they always do, all that lives within this water will remember that this is real and this is beautiful. And you will crash onto shore then surrender with grace, 
rejoicing in reunion with something so much bigger singing. With this moment, with this breath, I begin again. With this moment, with this breath, I begin again. This poem is called Pantone 7514C. Uncomfortable with the choices to fill in and the forms I have to fill out, I got an app to tell me what color I am. Tired of answering other, though other feels most accurate because other is all I've ever been. I can't be in the mainstream because I've got family on each side of the river. Ni white, ni black, ni de aquí, ni de allá, ni huero, ni plantero, no sé quién soy hoy. Tomorrow, I'll know who I was then. Today, a shade lighter than yesterday. I no longer work outside. I lose color the more I study. We are a chameleon people, changing color to match those with whom we associate. And all this time, I thought I was brown or beige, maybe taupe, like the botas I had in high school. In Mexico, they were called color de hueso. And I wonder, what color are my bones? Do they change like my skin depending on the season? Or if I'm working outside or inside, does the strength come from their color? Does the color come from their strength? I cannot ask, why am I so brown? I worry, am I brown enough? Maybe I'm white passing until my tongue fails me. I brought home paint swatches from the hardware store. I couldn't find the right color to match this coat that I've been wearing. I got an app to tell me what color I am. It said tumbleweed from the orange family. Orange, the color of fake tan. But Benjamin Moore said San Carlos tan, 206 red, 161 green, 137 blue. My complexion reduced to numbers that just don't add up. My finish, anything but flat. Semi-gloss sounds like an appropriate attitude when you're walking on eggshell. I've spent so much time trying to be a chameleon. I should have considered that maybe I'm a chimera. Compartes from here, partes de allá. I got an app to tell me what color I am because I can't trust the color in my own brown eyes. Well, whatever you got in yours. What is English? What is Spanish? The definitions don't change and the border between language and people remains. It's insane, but what remains is a distant relative to all that is, all that will be, and all that was. The cries of the poor endure and become the music for the children of the rich. Drowned in the rivers, scorched on the desert, hung from the highest tree. Freedom, won't you weep for me? Freedom dangles its feet. And then there's Easy Street, talk and talking, and someone has to pay the bill. Empty pockets, open hands, arms were made for hugging. Loss of life becomes something to laugh at. Children's parents, parents teach their children, and all the world revels when their team wins. Again and again, barriers are created. Those related are separated by the fascist regimes that are recreated by the modern political bureaucracy. Rivers are not seas. You can cross them on your knees. And if you sneeze, you might not even know you crossed it. What is English? What is Spanish? The definitions don't change. The border between language and people remains. Until mañana, tomorrow. COVID hit and I looked for a new job. Hospice in a pandemic. I joked to Isa that the job description reminded me of the Chernobyl TV series. I call her on the phone and read a posting to her. Hospice nurse needed. We need one brave hospice nurse to provide end-of-life care to COVID patients. In the TV show, a reactor is about to spill more radiation and they need three brave men to volunteer to open valves to prevent an explosion. 
three young men agree, knowing they will die of radiation poisoning in weeks. They do it for a bottle of vodka each. Relatable content. It's been nine days straight of singles, doubles, exhausted, grouchy, unable to celebrate birthdays. The hospitals are emptying to make room for COVID patients, and I see the other side. I'm lucky, safe, careful, and yes, yes, lucky. I was sick early after taking a job in DC. No way of knowing if I had it then. No tests were available in San Antonio yet. But I read in the news that a tiger in the Brooklyn Zoo had COVID, and I couldn't help but think, that tiger got a test and I can't? My job is driving, visiting the dying. I go to nursing homes, I go to hospitals, I go to trailers surrounded by flat, open Texas outside the city limits. I go to housing, to mansions. I go to homes. I'm lucky enough to not have been severely sick, even though I touch the sick, hold the hands of the dying, even though I did all this back when we didn't know if it was safe. I use my own PPE, breathing in their last moments through a paper mask as they breathe them through tubes. The day of the attempted coup, I didn't know what happened. I worked all day, heard pieces on the radio. Before I leave for work, my partner says, there's a riot at the Capitol, and I say, of course there is, and pet my dog as I leave my house. I visit a patient in a nursing home. The sign on the door says, all media inquiries should be directed to our media manager at blah blah phone number. I enter in full PPE and the nurse who unlocks the door, because all nursing homes are locked now, says, take off that paper gown. Haven't you heard? The health department says, those do nothing. I tear off the gown and put on the plastic one handed to me. The lobby is empty, abandoned visiting stations of fancy chairs separated by 10 foot high plastic partitions. I chat with the nurses, thank them profusely. I walk up to the room, separated from other units by double doors. I reach for the hand sanitizer on the wall, but it's empty. There's a gallon sized pump bottle on a table that says Tito's Vodka. How is Tito's Vodka doing more than the federal government right now? Never mind, just rub your hands, glove up, do the best you can. Everyone told me this patient was so sweet, so funny before he got sick. The nurse tells me he was into watching the news, and when he got a cough and then was rushed to the hospital, he said, I guess this COVID thing is real. And I see him. He's still sweet, still himself, just in slow motion. I check on him tuck him in, and I know he's not going to make it another day. I thank him. I say, nice to meet you. I give him Powerade from a tiny cup. As I walk out, reaching for the Tito's hand sanitizing modified for a pandemic vodka, in my car I think, he could have made it, and then realize none of that's useful, realistic, or appropriate. My job isn't to wonder why this so sweet, so funny member of our community won't make it. My job is a good death. If nothing can be done, the hope is a good death. Comfortable, dignified, surrounded by love, even if you have no family in your last moments, there's the love of a stranger in the form of sips of Powerade. My sister called me to tell me, be careful. I say, what is happening? The White House is stormed? Those idiots were at the state capitol with machine guns at the protest for abortion rights. They were at the Alamo when we were protesting for Black Lives Matter, and years before at the immigrants' rights protest I went to with Dad. I don't take it seriously. I say, I'm doing paperwork in my car, love you, call you back, bye. I go to my next home. Two-story in a gated community. The family is celebrating Chinese New Year. Red, beautiful decorations with Texas modifications. H-E-B bottled water, topo chico, and oranges on the table. The family is watching Cantonese telenovelas. The granddaughters ask their dad how to say, take a deep breath to their grandmother. She says back to them, have you eaten? I think looking at the ladies, don't worry. I'm third generation. I know how you feel. The ladies lay in bed with my patient who's over a hundred, speaks no English, and did her own laundry and cooked her own meals last week, but now cannot move. I look at the nightstand. There's a black and white photo of her so glamorous in short hair and a blazer holding the hand of a little boy wearing traditional Chinese collared shirt and little boy shorts. This little boy is standing next to me, looking at his mother in the bed and his two grown daughters kneeling and crying next to her. 
and they ask, what can we do? I say this, be with her, talk to her, sit with her. You're already doing the best you can. There are moments of medicine, big equipment and supplies, but in my job, the best case scenario is this. My homegirl texts me and says, I don't know if you're home or out with patients, but it's wild in DC right now. I text her back, I can't talk right now, I'm doing hot girl shit, and send a selfie of my face, marked red from my mask. It was a trend back from almost a year ago, when we all cared, all feared, all tried, because Europeans were dying. And now that I'm here in Tejanos, San Antonio folks are dying. It's just a quick joke because shit is too fucking heavy. I got a call that the hospitals here in Texas were on lockdown, and the only thing I thought was good, I have time to eat before my next patient. I get called to see a patient who won't make it out of the ER. The hospital is out of PPE. I wear what I have to see her in a negative pressure room. She says she used to be a teacher. She loved to teach art, loved to paint, and now she loves to chat. I ask her if there's anything I can do for her, and I brush her teeth while she's dying of COVID because that's her only request for comfort. Another nurse knocks on the glass and says, that's long enough. I explain slowly, calmly to the ER nurse that it's okay to give more morphine. Then a doctor comes over and asks, what is everyone looking at? As I'm talking to three ER nurses. One says, we're learning how to do hospice. We never see it here. He looks at me and says, you watch people die all day? You like that? I say, I like my job. He calls me sicky and walks away. My patient died a few hours after being so chatty. I go home and work on my charts. I'm done at 2 a.m. I check the internet. Everyone is sharing clips of the riot. It's only then I realize what has happened. I'm floored, but not surprised. These people finally got their chance to do what they always wanted. Someone shared the video of that woman being shot, flopping on the floor like a fish out of water, gushing blood in beats that I understand from my years at the hospital. She's wheeled out in CPR in another video, and I know she's dead. Another day of looking at death. Our country is hemorrhaging its citizens, and the powers that be, they don't care because they saw who is dying. Workers who can't stay home, indigenous people, passing in numbers that required doctors without borders to be deployed to the reservation. Black and Latinx people dying at rates nearly three times that of white Americans. Filipino nurses, one third of the nurses who have died but make up less than 5% of all nurses in America. The next day, I have an early meeting. I'm called to see a patient in a fancy nursing home with chandeliers. As I get out of my car, I put on my mask. Looking across the parking lot, at a building going up, about 20 men are busy, yelling each at each other across the work site in Spanish. A woman wheels a trash can across the pavement in a mask and gown, but I can still tell she's smiling at me. I wave and yell, buenos dias. She says it back as I walk up to the doors. I meet our doctor, a short, smart woman from Iran. We met with this person who demanded this meeting and she's an hour late. And she starts by saying she's a nurse, well-connected in New England, related to the head of research at this university and that one too, elite academia over there. And she tells us that Texas has the worst medical care in the country and she knows why. It's the education, it's the population. None of the doctors here are even educated here. You look them up and they're from University of Guadalajara. She says this to a Mexican-American nurse and a Persian doctor. Maybe it's the lockdown, but I haven't experienced this level of racism in my face for quite some time. She demands so much from us, just like the rest of the country, who wants our labor, but not us, who wants us to invisibly produce, harvest, build, but not look us in the face as humans and respect us. This is what that riot was about. It was about people demanding to be above the law, above other people being told that they lost superiority and are now trying to take it with a gun, with a mob. These are the same people who refuse to save even themselves by wearing masks, staying home. The country is in chaos and this was its most visible, 
but all elements have been present since our country's inception. Mass death, but expected to keep working, keep providing, knowing the risks, because those risks are different depending on the color of your skin, how much money you have, what kind of medical care is close to you. If this country was built on using people as machines, as objects for disposal once spent, how can we build on the rotten wood that will crumble in all of this? Plague, racist president, cruel violence. It's just more weight this house cannot withstand. And if it crumbles and we live in its rubble, most of us won't tell the difference between strong, healthy government and a pile of trash because we've been living down here for generations without anything we need. Any talk of change will look suspicious to all of us here, living as support, be as support beams to the big white house that never let us in. The left hand. I'm tired of having the same dream every night, I said. The dream in which I lose my left hand doing a job I wasn't born to do. Sometimes I'm picking trash on the side of the highway. Other times I'm saving a drowning man. Sometimes it's an electric saw that jags my hand off. Last night it got chopped clean by a butcher's knife. Weird, because as a boy I, admir I admired butchers and liked their knives. Brown and soft, my hand bloodies the floor. This hand that has done the slapping and the punching gets punished by a force that's stronger in dreams than God. It's the same hand that broke a beer bottle on a man's head when he called me hijo de puta. The same one dogs lick for affection. As soon as my hand is gone, I remember it as a gentle animal starving for the touch of something other than that of the right hand. Maybe that's why that's what it was. The starving that turned it into an enforcer. I'm awake now. And I have no way to tell you that even though I live with two hands, one always goes missing in my dreams. What does that mean? And what does that say about my life? If I ever dream my hand floating down a river, should I follow it? Where would it take me? The salmon and the catfish will know I'm crazy. Look at this fool, they'll say, and laugh the laugh that only they can hear. They've waited centuries for me to dip my feet into the water. They knew I would come and try to take what no longer wants to be a part of me. Just so you know, I always have enough time to step out of the river and make my way home. I find you packing your bags, closing the curtains, locking the door. You can't see me, but I see you. And the night returns, and so does the river, and the hand that rides the current to the ocean and refuses to drown. Dejar huellas. Si por dejar que mi voz se escuche por todo el pueblo me cueste la vida, por dejar las palabras traficando a los oídos de los que no están de acuerdo con mi palabra, por tener una voz y defender a los humanos, será mejor morir traficando en la palabra y dejar huellas que morir en silencio. Amaneciendo el día, yo desperté llorando Porque toda la noche soñé que estaba aquí Not long ago, it seems like only yesterday, my daddy was a traveling musician. His instrument of choice was the bass guitar, and he sang from the heart. From city bars to elegant halls, quinceaneras, weddings, and bautismos, city dance halls and barns and migrant camps. I followed him and my brothers in, on I-80 into Wisconsin, crossed into the Indiana and Michigan, traveled most of Illinois, oh, to be in the road again, to do it again for the first time. The excitement of loading up the instruments, arriving and watching them set up, probando, probando, uno, dos, tres, over and over again. Bum, 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 practicing the bass pasadas. Sas, sas, sas. 
sings the snare drum. The guitar crying and the keys on the keyboard are dancing. The hard understanding setting fire to the prayers of the Tejano songs. There are those who talk and those who listen. I listen. I'm going to take a chance that people won't judge me because I can't hold it back. I got to get it off my chest. I let the grito out as the ranchera begins. Que yo soy borracho, eso dice la gente. Mi última paranda será. Women are always waiting to talk to him, maybe hoping to be his next querida, snatch him away from his wife. He was so handsome and smooth. They also knew that he would never leave my mom. I interrupt. Hey, Dad, can I have some money for a Coke? I'll give it to you later. I need it now. Knowingly looking at the interesada, she nods her head and with a heavy sigh, she walks away. She'll be back when I'm not around. Descarada. Some talk and some listen. I listened to the words as I wrote them down for him over and over again so he could sing them. Made me feel like I was part of the conjunto. I listened to the music as it filled my soul, my feet moving to the cumbia, the rancheras, and the polkas to go back and have it that way again. There's something there in the memories that keep us moving forward, the memories hidden in plain sight that keep him alive. Porque Dios mío, dime por qué. This one was called the bar fight. Once in a while, it's a healthy sign. A bar fight once in a while is a healthy sign you still want to live. God's per good purpose sits at the bottom of the drink you have every morning to prove you're a man. Once, someone told you, it is chingon, it is macho. The trees ignore you because you're not a tree. People ignore you because you're not a tree. Still, you want to talk to them, let them know you want to start over. You want to find a new opponent more dangerous than the universe. This is the way to go because it is so macho, chingon. You need it now, before the mirror forgets what you look like, before water forgets how to drown you. This next poem is from a collection I have, uh, Various Streets on the West Side. Um, this is West Craig Place, or Ghetto Fab in the Summertime, about me and my cousins. We ran through front yard sprinkler rainbows in our chones, manguera wielding cousins slamming flat chested and full bellied onto Vela's soaked up porch, slip and sliding down trash bag roads our uncles paved and saved 20 bucks. We chilled in dad's ice chest, our own backyard pool. We were cool with our Kool-Aid popsicles fresh from the ice tray, we held their toothpick stems like ladies. We sold watermelons from the back of a pickup truck, ate lemons stuffed with Chinese candies, wore the marks of junk food junkies, purple fingers, black teeth, and big red mustaches. We kissed boys who played ball at grandma's backyard rim, truth or dared each other into spilling secrets and running jokes. We ran to Woodlawn's pool by the old playground with just a ghost of its seesaws now, that old balancing act now deemed dangerous. We rolled down Kathy Street Hill, grass in our hair, smiles all over our bodies. We rolled deep. My last poem, um, the last poem I'd like to share, appeared in Drumbeat. This is the newsletter magazine from the American Indians of Texas. I was very happy that they published this. I'd really love to turn it into a picture book one day. So it's for all ages and it's called Of the Sun. Child of the sun, you've been blessed since birth. 
Your skin is akin to our brown mother earth. She kisses your hands and guards every step. Even in dreams, you are carefully kept. For a promise was made to ancestors before you who brought life to the land with the bounty they grew. Corn, aguacate, squash and tomatoes, chocolate, vanilla, beans and potatoes. The list goes on. These foods fed so many. All over the world, there was suddenly plenty. Thousands came to these lands looking for a new life. For some it meant riches, for others much strife. But the land is the keeper of original story. She protects all the tribes who once shared her glory. Your people were here since the first rising sun. Your tie to la tierra cannot be undone. Mestiza, Hispanic, Latinx, Chicano, illegal, Indian, migrant, Mexicano, whatever they call you is merely a name. Your bloodline, your story remains just the same. Flags will fly, maybe die, and leaders will change. But your bond to this land will always remain. From Yamana down south to Inuit in the north, the land's first people will keep pushing forth to survive and to thrive despite changing days holding on to their customs while learning new ways. If you've planted your roots or traveled quite far, always remember deep down who you are. Indigenous, native, on this land you may roam. Wherever life takes you, it means you are home. Thank you. Unidos sin tener poder. Gaviotas vuelan de puerto en puerto sin que les pregunten nada o que los detengan. Son libres sintiendo el aire, la lluvia, el frío y el sol disfrutando de las tierras bendecidas por nuestro Señor. Si tan solo pudiéramos ser tan libres como las gaviotas. En realidad, si te pones a pensar, no somos libres ni en las tierras de la oportunidad. Somos gobernados y dictados por los presidentes, reyes, reinas, comunistas, emperadores, las leyes, las reglas y todo para el beneficio de los más poderosos. Que los que no tienen el poder es más difícil que sus voces sean escuchadas. Unidos nosotros los que no tenemos el poder, seguimos luchando y somos más poderosos de lo que se imaginan. Somos más libres de corazón y el alma por quienes somos. Nuestras riquezas, nuestras raíces, jamás nos las podrán quitar aunque quieran. Esto lo llevamos por dentro con orgullo y pasión, con la fe de nuestro Señor. Jamás nos la podremos dar por vencidos cuando está la esperanza de las gaviotas y se haga justicia. Oiga, señor, no me compra. Chicles, chicles, pepitas, pepitas. Oiga, señor, no me compra. Are the words known to the children of another country having to work, give up school because they live in poverty. Chicles, chicles, pepitas, pepitas. Oiga, señor, no me compra. Are the words these children live by to help their family but their dreams and hopes are much greater to go to the states, legal or illegal, and say, Chicles, chicles, pepitas, pepitas, oiga, señor, no me compra, behind. To be able to go to school, get an education, have a better life for them and for their families, instead of having to go to work, having to say, Chicles, chicles, pepitas, pepitas, oiga, señor, no me compra. The words they now live by are a dream to pursue a better life in the land of opportunity and say goodbye to chicles, chicles, pepitas, pepitas. Oiga, seño, no me compra. Silver glitter, high heels, sparkle as she moves. The news is she's inspired, retired to the world of affluence, self-confidence, and raising her children. Remembering when things were not easy, opening windows as she goes, 
to allow the breeze to bring in the smells of society, the woes of those that did not make it. She blinks, she lives. Exuberance of youth hovers and twists and turns and dips and swerves and lands on her forehead above her third eye and I am out of the picture. Does it fit your idea of how things should be? Can you see that I too was young? And youth never leaves us. It resides within where old age and worry have never been. Watch for long enough and it all comes clear. No fear. We've all been going through some very hard times and there are a lot of people who have been helping us get through these very hard times. This is for some of them. Let's say grace. I try to teach my son that we will not eat or quench our thirst without humbling ourselves for a moment and praying first. Of course, I thank the multitudes of sky gods and lords and ladies of light, celestial queens of cosmic benevolence and all divine givers and finders of human sustenance for this bounty and this manna, for this daily gift that we break in order to share. But I also thank the many, many, many manos and so many hermanas and hermanos whose hands and arms and backs and legs and feet have miraculously placed this food here for us to eat. Without considering all the work behind every dish, it seems as easy for us as simply making a wish. I thank those who plant and grow, who bend and plant and grow and pick, who wake and plant and grow and pick and load. I thank those who drive the long roads to us, who connect sleepless miles to our dreamy wants. I thank those who herd, who slaughter and butcher, who package, who stock, who prepare, who cook, who wrap, who bag, who serve, who hand us meals through small windows with tired eyes forced to smile, weary hellos. Without these and so many countless others, so many of our sisters and brothers, we would never be able to sit so sweetly and comfortably at our table. Of course, I thank the multitudes of sky gods and lords and ladies of light, celestial queens of cosmic benevolence and all divine givers and finders of human sustenance for this bounty and this manna, for this daily gift that we break in order to share. But I don't always look up when I pray, for there's always a take to the time-honored givens. Our greatest praise is not always meant to rise up to the heavens. Patriotismo, que es? Do we have to go to war in an unknown land and fight for our country in order to prove our patriotismo? Do we have to risk our lives against soldados we know nothing about except that they too are defending their country? Will this war change the world? We ask of all wars. Nuestros padres, nuestras parejas, los hijos, los hermanos, tienen que sufrir our absence while we prove our patriotismo? El patriotismo no nomás se demuestra en una guerra, en una tierra extraña, contra soldados que no conocemos, or that we personally have nothing against. Patriotismo se demuestra when we served our military, even in the face of discrimination, when we were only allowed to uh, scrub the deck or paint the ship or trabajar en la cocina, peeling the potatoes or lavando los trastes. We went and defended our country in spite of this, when our troops were separated by colors, like when you do the laundry. Patriotismo is watching your child go off to war and your heart is heavy and your spirit cries because it does not know if there will be a reunion embrace. One war receiving our sons from Hero Street, USA, sending them to the Philippines because of their Spanish tongues, only to be silenced when they return to their homes. The neighborhood of Edgewood in San Antonio losing 54 to another war, 10 of them 
graduated from the same high school in the same year, with two of them still MIA. Yet, we are a very patriotic family, said Gloria Carson, sister of one of the 54. Many of our returning soldados were never honored until after death, or the families of those we lost in battle, esperando años para recibir el honor to be bestowed on their loved ones. Patriotismo is knowing that you have to drink from a different water fountain and enter through, through the back door. Yet, we do not hesitate to take arms to defend lo, pa lo poquito libertad que nos permite. Foreigners in our own land, quizás, but it's our land. Y a pesar de todo, we are orgullosos of our patriotismo. Patriotismo is not just defending and sacrificing in times of war. Patriotismo is forming the American GI Foreman Forum to serve and assist the needs of our veterans and their families, and fighting for our veterans' right, who are American after all. Patriotismo is leaders like Cesar Chavez, who fought at home and sacrificed for the dignities it deserved to all. Patriotismo is fighting in our own land upon returning home, not with weapons of mass destruction, but with weapons of words and fearless leadership. Patriotismo is encouraging other people to vote, organizing them as a community, empowering them with knowledge that they are all capable of accomplishing the impossible, regardless of circumstances. Patriotismo is believing in equality for all, and achieving civil rights and labor rights through nonviolence. Marching so that men, women, and children have access to decent wages, education, decent housing, and food to eat. Patriotismo is holding the country you sacrificed for accountable to fulfill its promise of equality, decent housing, and freedom for all people. Patriotismo is believing in equality for all and achieving civil and labor rights with nonviolence. Marching so that men, women, and children can have access to decent wages, education, decent housing, and food to eat. Patriotismo is holding the country you sacrificed for accountable to fulfill the promise of equality and freedom for all people. Patriotismo is collectively believing that Cesar Chavez once said, once social change begins, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person who has learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person who feels pride. You cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore. Patriotismo cannot be taken away from us because we are this tierra, and patriotismo is us. Carcass, South Texas dirt road. You still remember how it looked after the drizzle licked it clean. What the hell was it? Blades of grass taking the place of teeth. The wind snout sniffing sockets for a light long gone. You must have been nine years old, old enough to know that dust is raised to fall on dust again, old enough to keep secrets. Years turn horror into poetry. Maybe you want to go back to the wood frame house sitting on concrete blocks, to the mutt you saved from drowning in a canal, to the girl who had no faith in you. She had a pretty yard. Her father worked for the city. Maybe you don't want to remember her or that your father was without legal papers, all day digging trenches for plumbers, always walking on that, on the dusty Colonia road, the dark and wind wet, like a monument for old bones. So, you think it's easy being an earthling? Think again. Taxes, Texas, tripe, treason, trigonometry, trips, Traps, try, trollop, and all those other words that start with T. It ain't easy being an earthling. And then there's gravity. 
and some grave situations. Governments and nations and proclamations and... Damn. What's that lady's name? All the games employed, the words and the toys. Smog, they call it. You might think it's easy being an earthling. Wars, Mars, the moon, June, July, and why did you lie to me? And, and uh, oh man, what's the name of that tune? Oceans polluted, rivers you can't drink out of, water wasters, skirt chasers, womanizers, man haters, jail baiters, porn abuse, and this stuff called drugs, and not enough hugs, insurance, jail, bail, what's it cost to mail, freedom, free world, free trade, free love, Frida, calo, free speech, being cool, being hot, and if you're not and get caught, no, hombre, forget about it. Questions, answers that take you nowhere. Babies, making babies. Trying too hard, not trying hard enough, not giving, not caring, not sharing, believing that it ain't easy being an earthling. Shuttle to the moon leaves Every 20 minutes, no waiting in line. Shuttle to the Mars. Hey, every 20 days. You don't like it on Earth? This is my planet. Love it or leave it. The monarch butterfly has one of the longest migration patterns of any creature on Earth. It travels 3,000 miles from the forests of southern Mexico to the forests of southern Canada. Not one single monarch survives the journey. Instead, each generation pushes the succeeding one northward. And I too am a monarch butterfly, a Mexican immigrant. We are monarch butterflies. We come from Mexica royalty. We catch winds. We ignore the borders. We wear our skins like robes of black and gold and brown as we dance and work and pray under the rays of Tonatu, hijos e hijas del quinto sol. My familia has been coming north for centuries. My abuelito made it as far as the border could take him, but my father crossed over. I've out-traveled him and I'm encouraging my children to go as far as their wings might take them. Mi gente kept moving north, Chicago, Detroit, never making a round trip. Each generation left behind tombstones as stepping stones for the rest to follow. And maybe you can call it assimilation essay, but we had to adapt to survive. We couldn't blend in with our sarapes and our sombreros, so we traded them in for ball caps and button downs. But now I'm afraid that my kids have lost the taste for the nectar of our culture, that they lose more knowledge the more time they spend in classrooms, that our feet have grown weary, have grown lazy. We don't lost the rhythms of cumbias and huapangos and my own tongue has grown just as lazy because Eduardo doesn't have to roll his R when he becomes Eddie. And it's not like we can camouflage among the concrete, protect ourselves from the ice man that wants to put us in his net because no one was white passing enough in El Paso. They say that the reign of these monarchs will be over soon. Development has cleared out the roots that have existed for centuries. There's literally no place for the monarch to call home as it moves north. Soon they'll only exist in captivity as caged butterflies. The Mexica believed that each butterfly was the soul of an ancestor. And if our ancestors can't find places to rest in this country, what hope is there for us? How can they visit us if they can't find us? It's like Dia de los Muertos without any muertos. I woke up every morning in a country whose president has called my father a criminal. But my father is royalty and you can't command monarch. Ne, nemelisli, akan, welitli. The journey is not over. The monarchs are coming back in bigger numbers. Migrants from even further south are coming in droves. We can't be kept in captivity. Our kids cannot stay caged. You can't send us back to the cocoon. We have wings. We will fly. We will adapt. We will call this place home so our ancestors will know where to find us. <sighs> solo. Otra vez solo. 
¿Y qué? El mundo sigue dando vuelta, el sol y la luna suben y bajan y todo parece seguir igual. Cada instante distinto y diferente, transformación perpetua. And then I feel grounded near the beating heart of the city by the river, jubilant city, fiesta and gorge sound like loud water, freeways packed, streets amiss, tolerance pickled, tested to the maximum, the old roads, less travels, still will get you there. Carbon-footed manuscript of an ancient society at war with itself over small imaginings, the beginning of a new end, an endangered populace reveling in its own demise. Those in charge suffering from trigonometry, itchy finger eager to point, frenetic dreams of afterthoughts that lag behind, then catch up, fast and diligently claim their space in the newosphere. Rebel visionaries seek to save the day by patiently standing by, perusing their dictionaries for the proper words to fill in the blanks on the reformational guidelines recommended by the status quo. The thirsty earth, hungry dirt, poor rivers, evaporating lakes, vanishing forests, all become part of the poem written on the back of this fallen leaf from the poet tree. Solo. Otra vez. Solo. ¿Y qué? El mundo sigue dando vuelta. Transformación perpetua. Ay, Michelle. Mi chula. Mi chola. I'm all caught up in your aquanet. Captured by your copete. Perfecto, sin fleco, con efecto, atento. Ya es tiempo que tú y yo saldremos en una cita a las vistas o al Sonic to have a shake. Ay, Michelle, mi chula, mi chola. The rhythm of your chanclas is a siren song that I can't forget. Written in the wry smiles of your pencil thin brows. I want to kiss your café con leche lips after, as we move our hips to cumbia rhythms and boleros con el style. Ay, Michelle, mi chula, mi chola, I want to take you for a cruise in my Impala. Your legs go for days in esa mini falda. My heart goes for miles con tu sonrisa, como una brisa, take me to misa. I'll be yours sin prisa, para siempre, tu chulo, tu cholo, tu cholo, all caught up in your aquanet. So you take a picture of your father. <clears throat> You take a picture of your father with your new cell phone. The last one you take of him, thin and frail, looking like a praying mantis, as he brings his hand to his mouth with a piece of bread. If he pretends to eat, it is to appease your hunger to see him eat, and not to appease the hollow he knows. It's over, and you know it. Hours all you have now, after wasting years in silence, you, in the same path as his to reach this moment, where you hold up your heads like dim lamps and face each other, all light now, as you search in his eyes for closure, anything that doesn't require words, a doorknob perhaps, that opens the sky before you. Mom's tacos de frijoles. Sitting in front of the laptop, looking at my poems, eating cold tacos de frijoles and drinking coffee. Reminds me of my teen summer days when dad would take us to work in the cebolla and the tomato fields. He said he wanted us to learn what it was to earn money through a hard, honest day's work. My mom would make us tacos de frijoles for our lunch with fresh tortillas made that same morning. We would also enjoy her blanquillos con papas tacos. She waking up at five or six in the morning to make sure that we ate before we left. If we were working with the tomatoes, 
we would eat some with our tacos. If we were in the cebollas, dad would eat one with his tacos. Oh, disgusting. The taste of a fresh tomato is like heaven. Cebolla, eh, not so much. Hijo man, those were the most delicious meals. After a long morning of being bent over, hands dirty with the wet dirt, sweating faces and soaked bodies, we wore long pants and long sleeve shirts on the cold mornings. We would start the day with two or three shirts and then peel them off as the sun slowly let us know her force. If it had rained the night before, our shoes would be packed with mud and make it hard for us to walk. Although, when you're picking tomatoes and onions, you spend more time on your knees than on your feet. Then you ended up with knee pads made of mud. Sometimes, mom would pack us some coffee for us. Most of the time, if we could, we would run to the closest gas station to buy a Coke. There was a cooler of cold water on some truck or another. My dad would warn us to be careful drinking cold, cold water on the days that were extremely hot. You can die from the shock of the cold water hitting your overheated bodies, he would say. When we were done eating, we would spend the time horsing around, and sometimes we would engage in tomato wars. I would not recommend this with the onions. They hurt like hell. The worst was getting hit with the rotten tomatoes. Man, I hated it when I would reach under a bush and grab a squishy rotten tomato that would sometimes release its foul smell. I think back on those days when we dreaded that part of summer. Now I look back and reminisce on the experiences. And sometimes wish I could go back in time. The smell of a fresh wet onion field as I'm driving by brings an onslaught of nostalgia for my siblings and my parents. Well, I'm done with my tacos and my coffee cup is empty, so this poem is over too. This concludes our video presentation. Thank you for watching. For additional information on Centro Cultural Aslan and upcoming events, please visit our website at www.centroaslan.org or look us up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, if you missed some of our previous video presentations, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can contact us directly by phone at 210-432-1896. Muchas gracias.